Welcome back for another AI Weekly Roundup. This week, I dove into a mix of trending topics in the AI and tech world from heated debates over government support and bubble fears to jaw-dropping breakthroughs in open source models and even shifts in how big companies and startups alike are navigating the AI race. For those of you that are new here, this is a update that I do. This is AI generated. Um, it's based on all the content that I've consumed last week, trying to keep up with news and trying to be on top of everything in the world of AI as a software consultant. And I do this to help solidify everything in my own mind and share it with the team. So let's dive in. Government economics and policy in AI. I started off by exploring how public policy and governments are funding and reshaping the industry's dynamics. There was a bit of issues in the news this week about a statement that OpenAI, an executive, made saying that they potentially wanted an, a government bailout from the US or to them to ensure government loans while they were trying to ramp up and get more lending. Then David Sachs, the AI advisor to the White House, said that's not going to happen. And then Sam Altman also agreed that that's not going to happen. If they fail, they should fail because that's capitalism and how it should work. So that's an interesting one on are they too big to fail, really? Like that's the conversation here. Is open AI too big to fail with along with these other big seven AI companies, considering how many of these companies there are and how much money there is going through them and how much I think they're accounting for like the 12% of the GDP growth or something in America. So it's an interesting space to keep a look at. I don't think they'd be subsidizing anything, but America will be protecting them because they're the ones that are leading the AI race against the rest of the world. There's also some cautionary tales from Michael Burry. Those of you who don't know that name, you may recognize his name from The Big Short, that movie, or as the person who called the 2008 financial bubble. He's saying there's a huge AI bubble. There's parallels to the previous tech bubbles. However, he has called lots of other issues and nothing's ever happened. But there's a lot of value being derived from these models at the moment. Apparently, they can't keep up with demand. That's why they're trying to grow these data centers so much and a lot of infrastructure build out. A video I was watching mentioned that there was quite a lot of infrastructure build out in the early 2000s laying fiber for systems that were never used. However, that's a capacity problem where they were preempting capacity for the future at the moment we can't keep up so a bit different you have to see how everything goes i'm not sure i'm not well versed well enough in these markets to understand and tell you what's a bubble what's not and how it should actually work breakthrough innovations in ai models on a more technical and exciting note i was blown away by several videos showcasing next generation models so nano banana 2 came out with some amazing more photorealistic videos i saw a couple already in that video that's apparently a model that was in light testing some people got the chance to do it then Google pulled it. What I saw comparison of was Sora versus VO3. I think the VO3 just seemed more natural and more compelling still. So if the nano banana for image generation is going to be even better and closer to what VO3 did, it's going to be amazing. We're going to get to the point where you won't know what's a photo. They're going to be photorealistic. That's the term. And then there's a lot of updates coming out from China. Again, new models in what they're calling is Kimi K2. Every video said it's another secret. It's another thing that broke the AI industry, just like DeepSeek did at the start of the year with its reasoning. This is now apparently setting benchmarks and beating GPT-5 and 4.5 on certain agentic tasks, coming out from an open source model six months behind the frontiers and trained for a lot less. That's the biggest thing. It's open AI is spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Open source Chinese models are spending millions of dollars months later apparently there's a lot of secretive i don't know who said this or where they get their information from it but apparently in china they only release the news once it gets broken by like other countries america or europe or wherever it may be they don't put their cutting edge papers in the market so then other people don't catch up to them on what they're doing and learn from them they just release things as everyone else does it so then it looks like they're playing catch up i'm not sure if that's true or not but it's an interesting approach in the uh, global politics Corporate shifts in AI culture. So now we're going to move into a bit more of a boring side of the AI space, but something that probably affects everyone more, which is how people are approaching the AI in their businesses and how it's going to actually affect you. A lot of problems are still happening with the corporate strategy on Apple side. They're trying to build chips to run AI locally on the device because they're the privacy first company, like how they like to promote themselves. But a lot of this AI stuff is done in the cloud. Offsite inference happens remotely, so data has to move. So... Is that what's holding them back and not allowing Apple to keep up in the AI race because they're doing it at the a wrong approach? Or are they going to build these chips, partner with Google, use Gemini as the model that powers Siri, and then have these AI chips on board, which will then blow over and away because now they've got the embedded devices in hundreds of millions of people around the world already. Not sure how that's going to go, but we'll see. Also, then we went through a video talking about 
Google's roadmap on AI and how they're the only real competition to NVIDIA making chips because they've got their own tensor processing unit chips. And then another video covered that Project Suncatcher, which I discussed last week, which was launching satellites into space using solar power and then having them communicate with each other and running AI inference to so the AI processing in space, not in a data center on the ground. Again, very left field, very futuristic concept. Will it happen? I don't know. It's going to be interesting either way to see how they try it. Once the cost per kilo rate comes down for getting something into space, we'll see how that plays out. And that's probably going to be on the back of SpaceX to get that happening, really. And then there's a lot of people complaining about vibe coding, like that term is now done and dusted. I think everyone's used it. It's probably overdone. A lot of people still working through things, not getting things done productively. A lot of corporates still are not diving into the right thing, but a lot of people that think vibe coding is where the biggest gains are being seen at the moment. But really it's all about how enterprise IT doesn't keep up with trends and demands. They've got their own policies, they've got their own things in place. So if those people are not keeping up, then those companies fall behind. So that's probably gonna be one of the biggest challenges with these organizations and trying to move to AI through IT departments, which are controlling everything. If they don't believe it, which a lot of programmers don't think that vibe coding is a good solution to things, then they hold back the innovation for that organization. So it's gonna be a big problem. And then again, that all ties back to that MIT study where it said 95% of failure in AI projects and then they're using that as evidence to show see it doesn't actually work this is something that we don't want to do it's not working so we can't do it and it puts everything behind which is in and loggerheads with the executives are saying we must be AI everything AI has to happen so it's going to be interesting to see how this sort of shifts more it's been almost three years of ChatGPT's launch and how everyone sort of used it and the use cases and functionality have grown over that time so it's gonna be interesting to see how this sort of shifts over the next year or two as this was the vibe coding the agentic AI will be the next year and then probably robots and that sort of stuff will end up coming towards the end of next year as well. So it's an interesting place to be and how that will affect more jobs because there's been a lot of news throughout the year going up and down about jobs being lost, jobs being won, then people being rehired to do the same jobs or different jobs and move to different areas. So it's really interesting there. Really a lot of talk this week on AI and that statement as soon as sam altman says anything everyone makes a video about it says the end of the world says he's doing something dodgy or not and then that becomes the news cycle for the next thing kimmy k2 took over everything i'll read up and learn a bit more about that and watch some videos on some more tests and see what difference is there besides it being cheap and good i can't remember anything different out of it there wasn't any innovative besides the cost to train the model i think so as usual Love to hear your comments below. Otherwise, good luck with keeping up with the news.